<laughs> That's what you should call it. <laughs> Perfect. Well, hi guys, and welcome to the season finale, episode 10 of the Dish Podcast. And if you're listening, you won't know this, but this is the IRL episode. Uh, my dad is actually with me in the studio today. <laughs> That's right. I'm in, I'm, I'm in the inner sanctum. In the, the inner sanctum, in the, in, in the realm of the stream. We're drinking tea and we're going to play, not like right this second, but we're going to play Table Topics, which is not really a game. It's more of like a collection of really great, interesting questions. Uh, and we're going to see if we learn anything that we don't know about each other. <laughs> <laughs> we don't know how this is going to go. Yeah. Do we Do we reserve the right to say, yeah, I'm going to do a pass? <laughs> the audience will We know. just set the rules. Yeah. How many, how many are we allowed to say pass? We can. Okay. So we can pull randomly. We'll have to pull randomly, but we can veto one, two. I think it should be one. You one, one skip. So that's that's tough. So that if you, <laughs> you gotta be careful. Like, do I really want to waste my skip? Especially if the first one's a little dodgy. You're like, what do I do? Because uh, the next one could be worse. It's a gamble. Okay. It's a gamble. Yeah. Uh, all right. So one skip, and you gotta be honest. Okay. One skip. Yeah. Um. Okay. Before that, I just want to say thank you for enjoying the podcast. Uh, I know I haven't put out much content outside of like the podcast itself, but. Uh, I do, in case you didn't know, The Dish Podcast does have a TikTok account. Uh, it's just at The Dish Podcast. Um, and I am going to start uploading more there. So if you'd like to see snippets and maybe don't have 45 minutes to an hour to decide to listen to our <laughs> We're being podcast. honest, like an hour and 20 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> we just want the highlight reel. Uh, you can check us out on TikTok. I'm also going to start making more YouTube uh, snippets of the podcast. But I've been very overwhelmed with all the growth with Genshin lately. So that's mostly what I've been focused on, but we're going to get back to it. I, I promise <laughs> this is the priorities. Maybe if yeah. I hire an editor, it wouldn't be so hard. Well, but, probably I get to that point now, but I'm too picky. You see, yeah. like I'm so I, I've had editors in the past that have done a good job, but I almost, and this is like no slander to them, but I'm so picky about like the timing. And like only like I know my humor really well, right? Obviously, but like like I, every time I like sign off on an edit, I'm like I'm happy with it, but I just I know that I would have edited it differently, but it's like I don't have the time to edit everything. No, so. and you don't have the time to find that magical editor who who would know your timing. But yeah, I also can't be such a perfectionist. With everything no, in the world, I don't know that's, how to find that's the, the artist's out. That's the artist's challenge, though. Like, how do you? The creator, the creative's challenge. How do you? How do you do that? Yeah. Do you, I think you're naturally a control freak. Not you, well, but just. I'm like, whoa! Really? I, don't, I, I don't see myself that way. I guess, I guess we're getting into the game already, <laughs> dude. <laughs> But no, but but when I comes... met you as an artist. Yeah, in and, general. And right. when, yeah, the, the <laughs> generic, the generic you. But when, yeah, but when you come, when when you talk about the 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 product of your creative expression, you oh, you definitely have a vision for it. You know what the vision yeah. is, and it, and it's hard to sacrifice it. And you're not going to get it when as soon as you involve somebody else. But if you ever do find someone that where you you they, their vision actually comes alongside your vision mm -hmm. and get, it creates something that's. For the most part, better or you know, yeah, and, and you want to hang out with that person, you want to hang on to that person, but mm -hmm. um, this is a lot of work. Like, it's sometimes easier, I'll just do it myself because I don't have the time to train somebody yeah. else to see how it is. for them to calibrate, right. but to, it, like to find a middle ground between our senses of humor and yeah. styles and stuff. But you're probably there. I can start, I could probably start doing it now. Yeah. Thank you for all the love on YouTube, by the way. I should say, yes, thanks, podcast. But especially Genshin content has been popping off lately. So thank you for that. Wild. All right, let's get into this. I'm, let's get I'm into really, the I'm, question. I don't, I have no, I don't even know what this is. I've never played this thing. Or what it, is it a game that we play? Or is it? A, I've it's never, more. It's not real. It's like there's no rules. I've there's never no taken game. Uh, so there's I have just, no idea what I'm getting myself into here. You could probably turn it into a game, but anything can be made a game. <laughs> But we won't. <laughs> we'll keep it. We'll keep it mild for today. Um, rock paper scissors. Who goes first? Okay. We're no two out of three. Just go. Rock paper. Whoever wins goes for. Wait. 
We have to decide what it means. Choose us. Okay. okay. One, two, three. Yeah. You go first. Yours. Okay. Okay, this is pretty this is pretty tame. I think most of these questions there's not really leave anything like super dicey in there. Okay. How would you like to spend your elder years? Hmm. I want I've always wanted a greenhouse. Like I've always wanted an outdoor, like a big garden with like I think that's how I'd probably like to spend most of my elder years. It's like not caring for a whole garden because I'll be old and I don't want to <laughs> break my back trying to mow the lawn and shear the trees. Yeah, I know a lot about that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and you don't. <laughs> no, I think I've learned. I think I've learned. Uh, but yeah, I think I'd like to have a greenhouse and I'd like to... Yeah, I think I'd, I just want to like have people over and play games and like relax and go to the beach maybe yeah. travel if i like i don't I, it's hard to say if i'll want to do that in the future but okay i've always wanted a greenhouse like yeah that sounds for, cool like for maybe i'll probably have like lots of animals like frogs and frogs it's frogs again it's always <laughs> <laughs> when i was a kid i was obsessed with frogs i even had a frog themed 13th 12th birthday party yeah uh, 13th something. yeah and then your room was you chose to paint your room green that season in your life as well i did mm -hmm. you know oh the i first, forgot the two-story house that we rented and uh and, I actually forgot about the yeah, game room melissa's room was two colors two toned it was pink and purple and yours was yours was green oh i totally forgot it was a fairly subtle color of green oh, i don't yeah, think yeah. you guys let me <laughs> too far oh, you were cool. yeah it was all right it was like it was you know lime green it was it was but it wasn't I do forest green now. either though it, it was it was on the pastel side of green yeah frogs oh, yeah man. i've always wanted a frog someday i'll get my frog okay my turn do you want do you want me i just realized this do you want me to grab the question and ask it to you yeah i think that would be better that's more fun oh i think i should show you guys yeah, this is the game is. we're playing it's not sponsored If you needed to change your name, what would you choose? Oh man, you know it's it's funny. I've always I've always kind of wished my name was Billy. <laughs> <laughs> your your reaction was priceless. It was like, <laughs> why? <laughs> of all the graduates' names in the world, why Billy? <laughs> I must have had like there must have been some child in my past that was really like I liked him and his name must have been Billy. I don't know why. I just. If you had a son, would you have named him Billy? No. No, it's for you. <laughs> just my me only. <laughs> my son can't have it. If I can't I have, have it. He can't no have one it. Will. Yeah, no, Billy. Yeah, I don't know why. I always thought I always thought that was just a very friendly name. I have Billy. Hmm. I don't know. Well, Billy Eilish is one of the most like popular yeah musicians of of right now so we'll probably have a pretty big insurgence of kids being named well, billy well billy is a lot like my first name the actual name bob or right. bobby that it it actually kind of works for uh you know male female whatever yeah. you know you can it it's it, it travels genders you know um True. bobby it just changes the spelling usually a billy for for uh a girl maybe be ie mm -hmm. and, yeah. and same with bobby all right you know same thing I like oh, those androgynous names. Yeah, they're nice. My my Jeffy. the funny story is my my grandparents on my dad's side for most of my life, pretty much all my adult life, they would send me, you know, checks like for my birthday and stuff, like ten dollars or whatever like that. But they always spelled my name B O B B I E. <laughs> they thought you were a girl. I don't know. Maybe no, I don't, I don't think so. But they just I don't know where that, they got that. And and then I knew like I, I knew something had there'd been a turn in, in, in things when Maybe ten years ago, the last my my dad, grandpa, sent me something with my name on it, a card or whatever, and he's he spelled my name I E. So I'm kind of thinking if it's hereditary, I'm destined to be <laughs> I want to refer to myself as B O B B I E at some point. I don't know what it is. Or are you gonna start misspelling 
Can you even imagine just misspelling one of our names? Like Melissa with one S? I, I they're, cannot... a, they're in a way. Because, no. Yeah, you wouldn't. No, because your name, idea. yeah, no, I wouldn't. But, but well, no, I don't think so. I can, no, I know not. I mean, I'm not, but. And yet it happened to me, so maybe it's possible. But anyway, Billy. I'll have like a Billy. laugh if you ever yeah. misspell. I'm sure there's some sort of exotic name I could have picked, but I like Billy. It's just, you know, it's it's, it's nice. It's like it's like a cozy name. Yeah. Billy. I like it. Okay, here we go. Uh when you're down, what makes you feel better? Hmm. This is gonna be such a depressing answer. What I feel when I feel down, what helps me is fully indulging in that feeling <laughs> <laughs> and making no effort at all to escape it. Because usually if I do that, I can get to the bottom of what's bothering me. And then once I figure that out, then I can address it. So that's, that's, that's actually... my that's one thing. And then I used to do this a lot when I was younger, but I would make like a pros and cons list of like, or like good and bad, like good and not so good. I think that's, I think I probably have saved a few of them, but like if something was happening, I would write that thing down on one side mm -hmm. and then I'd write on the other side, everything I have going for me and everything that I have to be grateful for. And whatever, whatever negative feeling I had was usually gone by the end of that. And I was oh, just filled cool. with just gratitude and like peace. So I think there's that's probably the better option, but no, but there's a lot of wisdom in the, even your first answer though, because really what that question is asking is how do you anesthetize yourself? Right. Yeah. And of course there's plenty of options for that, but the truth is the better way is, is to go ahead. Well, it seems like for you, at least I'm going to go ahead and experience it and try to understand it. And then when I kind of understand it, that's really the path to getting mm -hmm. rising above it. For you. So I like that, you know, because if you, yeah, of course, anybody can anesthetize themselves to anything for any, for a time, but not forever. I don't want stuff to like build up either. Right. So I think there's like a healthy balance between letting yourself sink down to whatever it is that's like bothering you versus staying there for a long time and mm. letting it, letting it like snowball, which I've, I've done that in the past. And had to be very careful yeah. to not let that happen. The balance between introspection and and which leads to melancholy can lead to melancholy, which if if entertained for too long can lead to dark anxiety and depression. So. Yeah. Okay, good. That's a good answer. Thanks. All right. And then after you ask me a question, I have to I have to say something about this drink. I just, okay. In fact, I'm gonna say it now. Okay. <laughs> because I might forget, and it's so cool. I was uh, this drink that 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 Dara has made for me is what's it called? A psalm tea. Psalm tea with oat milk and a little bit of sugar, and and it's really good, really good. And I'm I'm drink, I'm drinking it, and I couldn't under there was something it was reminding me of. I couldn't figure it out. And while you were answering, I took a sip, and it hit me. It and it's it's precisely this flavor. If anybody has has eaten this they'll agree if you've eaten cheerios you know the cereal cheerios with milk and a little bit of sugar when you get to the end of the bowl and all that's left in the bowl is the milk that's been you know that's the, and then you drink that milk it's, this is what it that tastes like this it's got and why wouldn't it because you made this with oat milk and cheerios is oat yeah right yeah Wow, I don't think I'm gonna ever be able to untaste that. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, I've ruined the string for you. No, it's, no, it's I not love a bad that thing. Flavor. Wow. That's it, doesn't it though? And this oat milk that I'm using is like a little bit more oaty than most mm. oat and, milks. But and, and what makes it even better is that usually when you get to the bottom of a cereal bowl, always when you get to the bottom of a cereal bowl, the milk's kind of it's not cold anymore. It's, you know, it's yeah. of, and that can be kind of gross. In this case, it's it tastes has that wonderful flavor, 
and it's, and it's okay. ice cold. So what you're saying is, instead of making this, I should just buy Cheerios <laughs> and sugar and eat that, and then pour the milk over ice. You, yeah, if you want to get a you want to get breakfast out of the deal too. <laughs> Great Christmas day. idea, big econ economy box of Cheerios. Anyway, you have to I, try I, it now. That you you, you, you really should try it. Put them side by side. I'm serious. It's so similar. I mean, oat milk is made by soaking oats. Well, so I'll just so making, you can make oat milk out of Cheerios. Is that that's the premise? Yeah, sure. The, the the main flour in Cheerios is oat flour. Wow. So I mean, it is what it is. What an obscure and interesting discovery. I know. I mean, it it because it's, then I tasted it and it it I, I just I haven't had Cheerios for breakfast in years, but it brought back memories. Mm. And I couldn't pinpoint what it was in that drink that I just took a few minutes ago. How oh, cool. Yeah, it's really cool. Take, flavor is a great way to invoke memory. Oh, a have really you ever cool. smelled something and like and like tears filled your eyes immediately? Mm. Yeah. It's weird. It's almost like the emotional response is triggered before the memory itself. Yeah, you're like, why? What's going on? And then Where did I just travel back to? That's great. I love it. Ah. I love it. The love body it. is amazing. Yeah. Thank you for our senses. I like them. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> Thank you. Ooh, this is somewhat similar to the last question okay. that you that I asked you. Where would you choose to live if you had to leave the country? This game thinks you're like on the run. If you had to change your name. Man, I mean, do they, do they have something I don't know? Is the IRS going to knock on my door? What's going on? There's a question <laughs> They're for you. They're causing me to think about yeah, being on the land here. Um, <laughs> if I had to leave the country, where would I go? Mm -hmm. Um... Well, I will tell you right now, it's gonna, it's gonna be well. No, I, I already know. I'll go to Italy. Yes, Southern Italy. Anywhere in Italy would be fine, but I would, yeah. And I might choose that even if I don't have to, because that sounds really great. But yeah, somewhere in Italy. Return yeah. to the motherland. Yeah, my 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 family is from, my ancestors are from there, and my mom's side for sure. And because I, I love. I was there a couple summers ago. You know, just for brief time but it, it was enough to, to fall in love with it i love it i love it's very the, the weather is very much like california southern mm -hmm. california and, and it's i mean you're just out there i'm like these are my people like you know i feel very at home i feel like i'm back in new york with all my italian family which is always just a wonderful time for me and uh, italians are so familial like yeah very warm Brutal at times, but but and very honest. <laughs> yeah, and everybody but very you, warm and loving. Yeah, you walk into you know everybody's everybody's family to walk into the house and they, you know, nobody leaves anybody's house hungry. It just doesn't work that way. And you walk to a restaurant, they make you feel like you're walking into their kitchen, and yeah, it's wonderful. What was the biggest like difference that you experienced in Italy? Like whether it be like cultural norms or like like yeah, um, or difference in like a way that you felt. While you were there. Yeah, well, part of it is, you know, in this, to be fair, you know, I'm there and I'm on vacation. So I'm already, everything's looking, feeling better because I have, you know, no obligations. Nothing to do. And I don't have anything to do but enjoy myself. Although, yeah, I had some responsibilities when I was there this last time. But anyway, um, this is going to sound weird, but the way they, the coffee culture in, in Italy is really cool. Mm. Um, they have these little cafes all over the place and you and you walk in and you you order a cafe or you order an espresso and cafe is wait if i can say that right yeah that's right the cafe is basically a cappuccino you just get a, mm. you get a, a espresso and some milk and sort of steamed and they give it to you and and uh and then there and you're gonna have just the espresso which is darker and it's like one dollar or two one euro or two euros that's it there's no other there's oh. no there's no any other option that's it that's i mean no fancy nothing fancy and, and you sit there and you just it's, you, it's a stand-up bar and you just drink it and you leave like you you, you there is an option where you huh. can sit at a little cafe and then then you're it's a different scenario but they but they always bring you the little thing of your of your cafe and water it's always the two things and you just and it, I don't, it, it's just this thing that people do in the middle of their day. They don't want to sit there for hours. They just go and take a, wow. you know, they're, not, they're not shooting it. I mean, they're drinking it, enjoying it, but it's all done at the bar very quickly and, and, you're, and you're moving on. And, and it, 
it's really just out of the loose change in your pocket. You know, I mean, I know I, I'm, a, I'm American in Italy, so it doesn't, it's all funny money to me, right? Like, <laughs> I don't know. I mean, it's euros. I don't know if this is cheap or not cheap. I, I, this money doesn't feel real. So here, have this, take that, you know, but I know that one euro is, and or two euros is, is not expensive. Like, you know, that's, that's basically a buck 50. So mm-hmm. per euro. So um, have, at least it was when I was there. Wow. I'll never forget when I when I bought like a backpack in in London and I was like, wow, it's only 30 pounds. Oh no. And then I looked at the charge on my bank account on my checking account and I was like fifty-five bucks. Fifty-three dollars. <laughs> go right. You know, but just right. but just go with it. It's fun. Like you, you, you can feel bad about it later, but in the moment, it takes all it takes all the the guilt and shame away from overspending when you're shopping because you don't even feel like it. Like okay, the backpack was dope. I don't regret buying it. There you go. That's cool. Yeah. yeah. In I don't know how it is everywhere, but like L. A. L. A. California, I guess, like really prizes environment of coffee shops and like sometimes they're small, but like you definitely sit down and like. Right. You drink it and like some people bring their work stuff, but that's not really the case. Not really. No, not really. Um, and I, I, but I liked it. It was in, because a, it, the coffee was really good. Um, you got it quick um, and it it was just not it wasn't a big commitment. You know, you could just go, you drink and you coffee it. and you have to look far as find the next one if you want another one. And I don't know. I just loved it. And there was no tax. So it was like, oh, so you're OK. Here's your euro. You know, oh, so clean. Yes. So do we do away with sales tax in this country? Yeah, if you want to pay 60% income tax. Income tax. Well, I mean, as long as I'm asking, can we just do away with taxes? Well, it's, <laughs> if, we, if we could just print trillions of dollars, we don't really need tax to tax anybody, right? Yes. I mean, it's not like we get anything for free in this country. Yeah. So, we don't get health care for free. I don't know. It's just kind of nice when, when when you see a price for something and then that's, how much that's what pay. it is. And that's it. Like a garage sale or something. Although garage sale is different because you always leave feeling like you should have bartered better, you know. <laughs> I don't know, but I, I anyway. Mm-hmm. Let's go on to the next one. Let's see what let's see what the, your next one is here. Okay. Um. Ooh, that's a fun one. What's the most beautiful drive you've taken? Mm. I had many images flash in my mind just now to just remember where they, where they were. Okay, so the most beautiful drive was on a bus, and it was on the way back home from New Mexico, and I was one of the only people, like, awake, and it was this huge, like, I don't know if it was, like, a wheat field or just, like, an open field with trees, can't really remember, but it was the most, like, brilliant thunderstorm that I'd ever seen and like open skies so like you can see all the stars and then you just see this monstrous thundering thunder or lightning forking lightning just yeah yeah like Ah. just like striking the ground and it's like it's it was so brilliant it lit up all of the 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 like windows and cast this like this light into the bus and I just watched it until we passed through the thunder and that's the lightning that's cool that I, yeah, man, I was listening to like Ben Howard mm. at, at the time. And it was just a very surreal, melancholy experience. And just think if you had fallen asleep, you would have missed it. Would have missed it. Think about things that we miss in life because we sleep. I know. I mean, sleep's, why do we have to sleep? Like, it would, but we were made that way, but. So, yeah. We didn't imagine if you have what you could do, but then maybe that's the issue. If you if you didn't sleep, then you never you would never turn off. Like you would never. Yeah. It's like you have to turn your computer off once in a while and then turn it back on and then it, <laughs> it, it clears the cash out. <laughs> Let it update like for two hours. <laughs> uh, I I honestly I don't mind sleep. I more get irritated about having to take breaks to eat. Like as much as I love to eat. At least at this point in my life, I just getting up to like make food, uh, and clean up yeah. food, and eat the food. Like it, and it never it's ends. So dumb, but it feels like such a long, such a long spending spending of time 
that I just it's, it feels more like a nuisance but sleep however man have you ever had like an issue go and like a, anxiety or whatever it is in your mind and then you fell asleep and felt completely different in the morning mm -hmm. yeah I just I think I would turn into a wreck without yeah sleep you gotta reboot you have to reboot and like take a break like and just be literally imagine like one continuous day I don't think I can handle that Oh no! I mean, it's sleep deprivation. All the studies on it in for humans. Uh, if if you, I don't know. I, I went to uh, grad school with a guy who did a study on, on sleep deprivation, and so we would talk, and I got all this information secondhand. So I'm probably botching all of it, but uh, so, something to the effect of, you know, just just a, a, a small amount of sleep deprivation, like twenty four hours without sleep, uh, then you driving a motor vehicle, you're more impaired than if you had like two beers and then went driving you're far more wow. impaired and there's no laws regulating sleep right. deprivation sleep. um your 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 reaction time your judgment it's all impaired and then you know you you, you dive into psychosis if you don't get enough sleep like it's yeah. a big deal if you don't it's funny my your body will eventually just like knock you out you know you're a busy season my computer was glitching my my <laughs> laptop you know, it's a brand new macbook you know so it shouldn't be glitching and I mean, i've had it brand new i say i've had it all year so i took it to it at work i was like what's you know can you guys check this out because it's it goes into sleep mode and, and it usually you push a button and it, it lights up and you it just wouldn't do it and and so they had to they had to do a hard uh they do something to get it going again they always they're, they're like the priests you know they're, <laughs> they know how to you know but he the guy asked me he goes well how often um you know how often do you shut your computer down you know and like uh uh he goes have you have you shut it down since you got it this year and um and i realized i i don't think i have <laughs> like, so i've been it's been that kind of year you know <laughs> i i haven't normally i would but i'm too afraid to lose the things that i'm working on they're all open i have all these windows and all this uh, you always yeah you have windows open all the time and i can't clear it like we were just talking before we started recording, I haven't been able to clear things in my schedule this year, so I've left it on. And so we all need a reboot. Sometimes. We need reboots, so, yeah. So, and my computer was a good illustration of it. Like, okay, that was kind of a good, a good reflection on. I'm glad summer's almost here for, for me because then I can do that. So. Then we can all reboot. Ah, yes. Okay. You could donate one million dollars to charity. Which would you choose? The tough one. Could you really choose wrongly? I mean, you know, any charity would be a good charity. But you know, charity. Um, I, I, that pulls at my heartstrings is that is, and I don't I'm really, really investigate it. So maybe if I did, I would change my mind. But you know that those those commercials you see for like St. Jude's Hospital mm -hmm. um, that offers cancer treatments to children at no cost, and you know we've been blessed that we we didn't we never go through anything like that with you and Melissa and and but we know we have friends who have you know and some have lost their their children some um, their children sort of are survive cancer survivors. I don't know. I just feels like I can't think of anything harder as a parent than that. Like I really can't. You know. I mean, you know, can't something to, to to. They say, oh, you know, parents should never bury their children, and you know, and that's you know, we all understand the pain of that. But there's a different kind of pain when when you're you have that fear already, but then you add to that that your kids are in pain. Like my my child is going through chemotherapy. Like they're they're getting stuck with needles and 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 they're getting chemo and radiation and. They might not really even understand what's going on, you know. Right. But and you're trying, so you're dealing with that too. Like you're you're afraid you're going to lose them, so you're you're willing to do this. But they're probably begging you not to do it because it's they don't understand fully. So you're you're you I would be thinking, oh, you know, I'm the reason they're 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 going through this. So I think about all that, and then you want to lump on top of that the financial you, you gotta pay for constraints. Yeah, that. and all the stress that that would, that can cause a family. So when I see those ads for St. Jude's, where they say you never see a bill. I just feel like that's great, you know. For for it's it's taking a, a situation that's impossible, 
That's that's yeah. horrible. And it's not making it's not making it go away, but it's at least taking the one thing away that you could take away, mm -hmm. which is the financial mm -hmm. side. So I don't know. That's my 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 answer to that. It's a good one. Yeah, that's that's a that's a that's a tough um tough situation. Okay, here we go. Would you prefer Oh, this is a fun one. Would you prefer money for a housekeeper, cook, gardener, or personal secretary? Oh, oh, hold on. Let me see that list again. <laughs> hold on. Where's the all the above uh, option? Oh, can I pay them to do all of those? Housekeeper, 100%. This is like the one, me and Joshua have talked about this. We're like, listen, I love taking care of our home. I'm happy to do it. Like it's I have the privilege to work from home and like I have the time to clean and cook and like it's like I want to raise our children and like that's that's like I want to do it. If I could not do laundry and not do sweeping and not do dishes like if we could just knock that out. Oh. Well, you know, Man. You, you can do that, you know. I know, I know. I mean, you sound like you really, really want it. You should... <laughs> it's not like that we're talking about going to the moon here. That's so true. But I... I... <laughs> What's the hang-up? <laughs> I don't know. Stubbornness that I don't want to... I don't want to pay for someone else to do something that I could do or that we can do. No, but think of it this way. I used to feel that way, and sometimes, like, like wash, get your car, wash your car. Uh, you know, I'm gonna wash my own car, and you know, and then one day you decide I'm gonna spring for I'm gonna spring the 200 bucks, and I'm gonna get my car detailed. And let someone else do it, mm -hmm. and then you you drive a car off, and you come back, you you get paid your 200 bucks or 150 bucks or whatever, and then you look at your car, and it's it's way more immaculate than you could ever get it, mm -hmm. and you your back's not hurting, your hands don't hurt, and you've not lost all that time, and you're enjoying this immaculate clean car and you traded the money for your time but you also got this car mm -hmm. and once you once you get used to the idea that, that you could do that it suddenly becomes like normal like okay all right i guess you know not like i go get my car detailed very often i don't but i also don't go <laughs> don't watch it often. <laughs> but for you like to yeah. try it just try it one time just just pay to have a have a housekeeper come in and just it's like clean the bathroom just clean your place one time and, and then and there's no further uh, commitment, you might, because like, remember? But then once I know what it's like. That's right. Then you're never going to go back. I'm spoiled. Well, remember when when uh, we, at the, at the old house, uh, we had those uh, trees or a lot of tall shrubs against the, the, our neighbor's house, and we had to, you know, cut them, and I'm looking up at them going, that's a lot more work than it looks like. Like, it, and I don't have a ladder to get that high, and so I went and talked to the gardener across the street when he was working on the neighbor's house, and struck up a deal, and he came and brought his crew and took care of it. And man, I remember sitting Literally. in the kitchen, drinking a cup of coffee, watching them do this. <laughs> and I, that was the best cup of coffee I ever had. <laughs> it was like they were, because they were professionals, man. I mean, they came in, they had these tools and they were done in like an hour. I would have been there for three weekends. And, so true. And they were done and it was out of my life. And it was amazing. So, yeah. Okay, I will consider it. I, I, I'm making like, the whole idea of exchanging money for time, like, I definitely have started doing that. Like, I get my groceries delivered now, so I don't have to go shop. I've started, like, I've, I'm testing out, like, meal delivery programs. And, right. Like, yeah, like, I've, uh, I'm have i easing into it. I think I'm just naturally, like, such a frugal person that I have a hard time spending on, like, well, if I, could, I, if I can DIY it, why am I paying for it? But, like, now my understanding of how valuable my time is... And like, there's, there's, it's a limited commodity, time is, that compounded with how much energy I do I have to do, to like work hard on stuff. It's helping me be more okay with paying for luxuries, yeah, like getting groceries. It, it really just becomes a math equation for you. Totally. Not that you or I ever were great at math equations, but in this case, if you say, so, you know, the cost per hour is less than what i will generate in an hour yeah. either directly or indirectly if i'm not doing this thing mm -hmm. then you actually it becomes a more it becomes more frugal for you to do that yeah that's cool yeah 
it'll probably eventually become more frugal for me to pay for an editor. <laughs> right. Because now that YouTube is actually generating like decent, like significant income, it might, and YouTube editing takes a very long time, it might be more worthwhile to delegate that, which I do want to do in the future. But again, if I can do it myself, I want to do it myself. Yeah, I get at it. At least for now. Yeah, I get it. Plus, plus, it's good to know how. You should. Everybody should know how to do you the thing before how. they hire. Before they hire someone to do it for them, because, you know, how can you really be? No, you want to know what what your product is or what you're doing. Yeah. All right. What's I wouldn't know on? how to advise. I wouldn't know how to advise or ask for things if I didn't know how to edit myself. Right. <laughs> uh oh. <laughs> What's the most fun party you ever attended? <laughs> Maybe a fun skip. This might be my skip. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I wanna. Um... <laughs> I don't know, man. I mean, I... most fun party. Let's move. Let's skip this one. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I had. I didn't think we were gonna use our skips, but then I saw that one. <laughs> You know, plead the fifth on this one. All right, so do you pick another one for me, or do I just... just move? Oh, I'll pick another one for you, yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, we already kind of answered this one. Okay, Where do you most like to travel? Yeah. Come in. Give us something good. Um, I already answered this one, right, too. Come on, give us some variety here. What do you think is the ideal age? <laughs> That's a good question. Just in a general sense, the ideal age. Yeah. Mm. Like peak humanity. Ideal age. I would say. I would say, somewhere between. Somewhere between, thirty and thirty. <laughs> because, at that age, you've lived long enough to acquire at least some sense of who you are and what you want. You know. You've, You've, to have formed who you really are and and you you're moving along in your in your career professionally whatever family uh, those things are probably in order mm -hmm. um, and you're physically still at peak performance um, and it's just a great age to be at if you're at that age if you're and it's not for everybody but if you if you started a family um, I mean, it's, it's kind of hard for me not to compare it to my where, where I was at that age. I just remember being in you know, their mid-30s and, yeah. and uh, you know, having two little munchkins running around. And, and you know, I, I was past the point where I was wondering what I was going to do with my life. You know, I mean, I had, mm -hmm. I, I was, or past the point of working towards starting what I wanted to do with my life. I was, I was doing it and, and, and seeing the, the, the arc, you know, there, that what was going to be and, uh, and. I was satisfied with that. I was happy with you know everything, and and I still feel that way. But now I'm 53, and I'm you know, it's great. But it would be nice to have a 35 year old body. <laughs> right. <laughs> it, 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 but I did. I, but I don't know if I would. I know a lot more at 53 than I did at 35. But but the question was, what's the what's the ideal age? I would say yeah, somewhere in that, you know, probably around 33 years old. I'll go 33. 33 is perfect. It's nice to hear because I feel like a lot of people are scared of turning 30. Huh. I, I don't know if I'll, my opinion will change when I get there, but I'm not afraid of turning 30. Like, I'm I'm 25, so I'm halfway through my 20s. Yeah. I don't feel like I'm going to look that much different when I'm 30. Yeah. I don't think I'm... I'll, what will have changed by then? Probably have at least one kid, if not two, if the Lord allows. I'll probably have my career like running like a running well. Mm -hmm. We'll have people, you know, working working with me. I'll know a lot more. I'll be wiser when I'm sure. thirty. I look twenties are fun. 20, I I'm having the best right now. Twenties are twenties are wonderful. I, I you know some of the, my best times at, in my twenties for sure. Um, but there was always this, you know, at a certain point you're trying to cross that chasm between being a boy and becoming a man you know and and what that means and and getting and 
shouldering all those responsibilities and becoming that person that you always wanted to be. And, and that's rough. I mean, there's a lot of, you make a lot of mistakes. You have a lot of false starts. You, you have a lot of relationships that don't work out. You have, you know, and you, you, you it's, it's just not, it's not, it's more yeah. tumultuous than your, than your thirties. Thirties, you, at least for me, is much more settled, you know, than I'm glad I'm already married. Yeah. You, you, don't you, miss dating. Yeah. You check that off. Do you realize I never knew mom in her twenties? Like I think about that sometimes. Like I'll say to her, you know, what if, I, I wish I, I it would have been fun to, to know you when you were in your twenties. Like I, 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 she was thirty-two when we met, so right. I, I don't know the twenty-year-old mom at all. Um, hmm. You know, she tells me about herself when she was in her twenties, but we we didn't meet until I, she was. I was twenty-four when we, I met her, but she was thirty-two, so I don't know twenty-year-old mom. You should ask her if me or Mel are much like her when she was twenty. Yeah, when she was in her twenties. I will. I'll ask her. That's probably the closest you'll get. <laughs> yeah, right. That's true. Well, I like you guys in your twenties, so <laughs> that's good. <laughs> All right, here we go. Ooh, this is a short one. Ooh, but a, but okay. Short question, long answer. How do you define success? This is a great question. <laughs> I'm so glad that it came up. Um. Okay, let me try to think of a succinct answer, and then I'll expand on it. I think success is okay, okay, okay. I don't I success is not an end point because I think you can be successful without reaching your max potential. I think success in the most succinct terms possible is when you are living a life that you enjoy. With the people that you love, like, yeah, I don't think it's defined by a certain number of income or I really think it shouldn't be defined by income or so social status or anything like that. Like mm -hmm. if you want to define it that way, that's fine. But I think like, I think I was successful three months ago when yeah, I was making sure. an income and being able to spend time with Joshua and, like, do what I wanted to do with my free time since the pandemic right. activities. <laughs> right. Um, but indoor activities that I'm able to do. Um, I'm not, like, stressed about money. I think I think whatever the level of ink of like money you need to make to enjoy the life that you live that mm -hmm. you're living with as much like peace as possible I think that's success that's like great. I'm more more monetarily successful than I was three months ago or like social whatever, I don't know I'm bigger bigger online than I was three months ago but I think that hasn't affected my my internal feeling of success like yeah that's a good answer because you can't the minute you attach success to something external you've just lost control of how you see yourself in your life basically you're yeah why would you why would you relegate that to anything other than internal you know oh success i'll, I'll feel like i'm successful when there's a certain number attached to my salary or my bank account or I'm successful when I have that beachfront property or I'm successful when I finally have like mm -hmm. 2.5 kids or you know whatever it is that you're defining you know, get that one job or drive that specific car I want those that's you know those things are fun and they're markers they're they're yeah. things that we you know that you, you can use that. yeah sure but but th you you wouldn't want to cede that control to to that because those are not in your control and invest your happiness in those things because no. you guaranteed you will be disappointed when you hit those markers yeah. because even when i hit those markers that i set up for myself like i'm excited but it's not like my life has radically changed when i passed from whatever point nine 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 to like the next rank like right i, I felt successful before i feel successful now like I can turn all this off and not touch it for however long and I'll still feel successful. Successful is relative. Success yeah. is relative. Setting goals is great. Yeah. But that doesn't define success for you. Set a goal, shoot for the goal, but the pursuit of the goal is is 
its, its own success. Right. And who you are, being content with who you are as a person is also part of success because, you know, you can make as much money in the world, but if you, if you hate who you are, it's not going to change the way yeah. you feel. Don't hate yourself. Don't like the person you are. And, and I don't mean like in a, in an abstract way. I mean, specifically become the person that, that you can look at in the mirror and say, I like this person. I like, yeah. I like, but we're all narcissistic. We all love ourselves, but I mean, <laughs> You know, they don't have to try to do that, but I mean, oh. approve of the person you are, and yeah. and and that requires self reflection because you got to look at yourself honestly. Nobody knows you like you know you, and be honest with yourself. Do you like the person you are? And if you don't, why not? And and then change those things, and that's success. Embody the traits that you admire, yeah. and and shed off the ones that you yeah. that that are harmful to you and to others. Easier said than done. Yeah, yeah it's not. It's not that simple. <laughs> they were easier said than done, but the, but again, it's the it's the effort, and the and it's in it's in the journey there. So that yeah. also defines success. That's a great question. I know. Wow. I hope I I I don't know. I don't know how long we've been going. I feel like it's been at least forty five minutes. But let me let me let's hope for one last good question. Okay. And then and then and then I'm going to ask you a question that doesn't come from the thing. <laughs> this is a good question. Okay. When you were young, what did you want to be when you grew up? Uh, I actually don't know the answer to this. When I was young, um, well, when I was like a really. Little, Want to be a doctor because my mom wanted me to be a doctor. So, <laughs> of course she did. You know, <laughs> but who does? Whose mom doesn't? You know, right. Bobby be a doctor. Doctor, president, you know, surgeon. Um, but when once I realized that I didn't like science and I wasn't good at it, <laughs> <laughs> I quickly I abandoned that. Um, but when when I was old enough to really like in junior high and then high school, I I wanted to be a writer. I knew even then that I wanted to be a writer. Wow. So I always, I'm doing what I have always wanted to do. <laughs> you, know? you wanted to be a writer mm -hmm. all this time. Mm -hmm. Wow. The, Congratulations. The, the professor, <laughs> the professor thing was, was um, unexpected. I didn't expect to have that thrown in, but yeah. So you did it. I am. I, I realized how, you know, that doesn't happen for most people, you know, and I don't know, you know, it wasn't, it wasn't like I just rolled out of bed and then, you graduated from college and then started writing bestsellers or something like that. Like it, it's not the exact version of of writer that I initially envisioned. It took other paths, you know, writing in for things I didn't expect to write. Writing, uh, I, ghost writing or or writing marketing stuff or writing. Being a sports writer was was a wonderful job. Um, writing, you know for video writing for television radio all that stuff it's been really great like i love it and that's always what i wanted to do so my 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 target has never changed you know what i mean i always wanted to do that so. isn't it kind of interesting to think that if you ever wanted to you could write like you could i don't i don't want to say you could for sure write a bestseller but like that's a possibility if you ever wanted to, like, I know you yeah. have a million story here, ideas, here, but here's the, here's the thing about, about writing. I, if anybody out here has an answer, um, please tell nope. me, because I don't know the answer to this question. There, there are some stories that I really want. To write. There are some, even, you know, some memoirs that I really want. to write. And even I've talked about this before. Um, a writer will draw from his or her life to write these things. And I don't, you know, I don't, I don't know that there's, if I, I really want to kind of dig into that, you know, um, there's cert certainly not a memoir where you're, you're straight up it's saying this was my life. And these are, this is what I, this right. is like, I, I don't, I don't know how I do that without hurting somebody's feelings somewhere, you know? Um, mm -hmm. But the people who know me best, if, if that sort of stuff going to show up in a novel too, you know, it, cause that's the kind of novel I would write. I'm teaching a fantasy fiction writing class right now, and I told my class I love reading fantasy fiction, um, but that's probably not what I'm. That's not the fiction I like to write. I mean, I do like to write it, but what I really love love to write are human stories about relationships and and 
you know, love and love and love and, and, and joy and, and loss and all that stuff. Right. Well, I'm going to draw from my life to write that. You have to, but I don't, I don't know that I can, I know that I can put that on and I put it out there because without, without, I don't know, you know what I'm saying? Like, there's just too much. And again, so I don't, I keep saying, I don't know, because I really don't. I don't Here's what you do. You write memoir and you keep it chill for your entire life. You come the big, you become bigger than Annie Dillard, the most renowned oh, wow. memoir writer. And then behind the scenes, you write all of these books and other stuff that gets discovered when you're gone. When I'm gone. And then you become a New York Times bestseller. Post mortem. Post mortem. <laughs> Just as long as I, yeah, I could do that. And you, you, you can, you and you and Melissa can get all the, uh, the get the, the tea. Yeah, get the get the, the paper from all that, right? That's what you call it, the paper. The paper. Um, the racks. Uh, but you know, there someone has said, "Well, we'll use a pseudonym, right?" With a pseudonym. Well, I could do that. But that doesn't solve the problem because the people who know me would be the only people I'd really be concerned about. Anything about. You have to keep it from everybody. And I'm not going to do that. And that's what suck. No. And so I, I don't, I don't know. have an answer for that one. You can't really disconnect like your artistic life from your personal life. It's not really possible. No. And so I've never been able to do that. And and so for that reason, I mean, I've written a lot, of, a lot of it, but I haven't. It's for me. I don't share. You know, which is hard for me because I believe writing is meant to be shared. But yeah. At least there's some value in it, like having been written, and at least you've gotten it out. Yeah. And but you I gotta make burn it before I die. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. Ah, it's such a it's yeah. Anyway. It's a shame. Okay, so here's my here's my question for you. Since we're coming to the end of our first, you know, our tenth episode, so you know, and it's funny because when we started this ten weeks ago, um, just to, and where you are now with your platforms. And, you know, whether it's Twitch, I mean, when we started it was our second episode where you got partnered on Twitch and, yeah. and it was sh shortly thereafter um, that you started crossing thresholds on TikTok, bigger numbers on TikTok as well. And then about five, four or five weeks ago, you, you said, hey, you know, I'm going to start paying attention to my YouTube uh, platform and, you know, been playing, been playing Genshin and all that. And you've had this exponential growth. In, you know, in, in these, coincidentally, in these ten weeks, and and so my my question to you, I guess, is um, a couple different questions. First is, you know, what to what do you attribute that success? And speaking of success, that, <laughs> that growth, let's put it that way. And and the second is would be more, um, you know, what would you like what would you like most your your community to know about how you feel about where you are? Mm, good questions. Okay, the first one is how would I attribute it to? Yeah, yeah what would you attribute it to? Um, I think every milestone I've hit and every like achievement has come from being aware and observant of my situation and taking advantage of every whatever the most in my eyes viable um opportunity was so like when hyperx followed me on tiktok i was really small back then uh and like a couple months went by and i wanted to like build a relationship with them so i was i thought about writing an email i thought about like dming them on twitter or something but then i was like no, let me do what I do best. Let me make videos. Mm -hmm. Let me make a video and use my background in marketing to make a, a un unsponsored sponsored post for them. Right. So I did. And now I'm, I'm like in contract, like sponsored by HyperX legitimately and have a relationship with the people who work there. And it's like that came from me. And like another part of that, like se seizing opportunities, I think, and grabbing when you see a hint of momentum, like, like look at it and analyze it and like just grab it by the throat and be like, okay, let's keep going. Yeah. yeah. So I think like I, advice to streamers and like content creators. And honestly, I think this probably applies to any career field is like shoot your shot like mm. over and over. Yeah. Um, and 
yeah, keep, keep, don't let yourself get bottlenecked by your own fear of things not working out because I, w I was really nervous to start posting on YouTube and making long form content because I thought it would, I thought it would be a waste of time and I thought I wouldn't do well, but I was like, okay, let me just swallow my fear and just try it. And in the last month, I've grown from 10,000 subs to 42,000 subs as of this morning. So, oh, wow. and like, it's an everyday thing, everyday decision that I have to make that I'm not going to be afraid. And I'm just going to, it's like, you know what? It's, it's the worst thing about cliches is that they're true. And, <laughs> and Rome wasn't built in a day. Okay. So it's yep. taken me a year and a half to get to this point. And I didn't go from 14 viewers to 600 viewers overnight like it was one rung on the ladder at a time mm -hmm. and right now i'm experiencing like exponential growth but that's a result of all the work that's gone in before right so don't 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 look too this is like a million pieces of advice right after <laughs> one but grasp onto opportunities when you see them and keep building those bricks and Pouring that cement and see where it takes you. So that's how I that's how I would best explain how I got to this point. Um, and then what was the second question? Yeah. What do I want to know? What, was you, what do what, I want what, my audience yeah, what to do know? I, what, what would you like to say to your community? <laughs> oh, so many things. Um, especially to the people who have been around for a long time. But really to everyone, um, thank you for showing me that there is a place for everyone on the internet. Um, I never thought, I've always been a really quiet person. When I was younger, a pretty shy person. I speak quietly. Um, I mumble sometimes. I go on tangents and and... I've had very few like true friends in my life and I would have never imagined I would have never imagined that the volume of people it the numbers don't really mean that much like really it's that an individual person would get a notification that I started a stream and would click on it and choose to watch me play a video game or to watch me play like live or watch me play a video game on YouTube or like if you've been around for a long time on TikTok listen to me monologue about about something that I'm experiencing like ah mm -hmm. uh, for someone who's had in the past has only had the ear of very few people it's hard to believe that I have the ear of so many people uh right now so thank you um I'm going to keep going. <laughs> I just want to keep making good content for you guys to enjoy. Um, and I've, I'm very, very excited for the future. Um, so thank you. This this content made possible with viewers, with viewers <laughs> like you. <laughs> yeah, that's great. That's thank great. you for asking that question. Yeah. Glad to hear your answer. It's been fun and for me and Mom to watch. You know we're proud of you. Very proud of you. I do know. And I know. excited for you. And it's neat that you have this platform. So thank you, everybody, for, <laughs> for hanging out with thank our, you, our daughter. <laughs> hey. Thank you for being on. Thank you for starting this podcast with me. Mm -hmm. And thank you for listening to 10 episodes yeah. of the Dish Podcast. Um, more to come. I think we're going to take like a two week break or maybe a three week break. We'll just have to see. Uh, and then we'll be back with. Who knows what in the future? Maybe we'll start having guests. Maybe yeah. we'll start having, who knows? Yeah. This is yeah, early stage. We'll take suggestions. Yeah, totally. We'll take suggestions. Um, you can throw suggestions in Discord. You can leave it in comments on YouTube. Uh, and we'll see you back soon. But until then, yeah. you can obviously, you you know what to find me. I'll be around. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh,
Yeah. Bye, guys. Yeah, Thank bye. you for listening. Thank you. Bye. <laughs>